At the heart of Scotland's largest city sits our busiest railway station. Glasgow Central is the hub that connects millions of people in communities all over the country. For station staff, keeping Central's passengers moving is the constant mission. It's a scary thought to think you're managing something as big as this. And with over 100,000 visitors a day, no two shifts are ever the same. Yeah, yeah, you've got to muck in. Everybody's got to muck in. I can see if anybody for the head office is coming in to catch me out. That's always good. Right, I'd be lost without the railway in Glasgow Central. This time on Inside Central Station, it's chaos on the concourse. Oh, as fans flood the station, putting staff and services under pressure. It's the worst thing that can actually happen. Why did we hear so long? I'm trying to find out for you. I'm concerned that you'll not get to the game in time if you wait in this queue. Central Station. Over 40,000 journeys are made from here every day. Central's location in the heart of the city makes it a major gateway to some of Scotland's biggest venues. From one of the busiest arenas in the world, the Hydro. We're off to the Ariana Grande concert. To the home of Scottish football, Hampden Park. Fans descend in their thousands from all over the world. And tonight, the Russians are coming. Prediction for tonight. It's the European Championship qualifying match. Scotland play Russia at Hampden. There's 30,000 tickets sold. We'll probably have a, a bit of an earlier peak, but it's whether they've stayed in town after work to have a, a drink and then, and then head out. Thousands of fans are expected, and Kat, ScotRail's general manager, is briefing her team. So it's just gauging it probably if we've got it in place for about quarter to five and just monitoring it. And anybody that's buying a ticket, if you know they're travelling to the football, just mm. ask them to walk through the, the pen, that first line, I'll show you when we go down. OK, everybody all right with that? Trains are arriving into Central, bringing a tartan army influx from all over Scotland and beyond. We've all travelled in different parts of the UK. Coming from England, this is where we meet up, have a few beers and then ch chill out. I left Scotland 37 years ago. I now live in a place called Lincolnshire, a place called Ruskington. And still up here following Scotland. Scotland's my life. Scotland is where we have to be. Hiya. What platform for my father? Uh, your next one should be just now. 17.31. Once it's ready, I'll come up on the board for you, OK? Right, yeah, all right, guys. Here. Thank you. I've been here a year, um, and for the, the, the Scotland games that have been on, I, I've never had any issues. You know, it's, it's, it's generally a, a good crowd, they're in good spirits, they're off to see their game, and hopefully they, they get a good result. <laughs> Tickets ready, guys, come through. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Have fun. We've got a good team on the ground who know what their job is, they know what they need to do to, to keep our customers happy, to get the trains away in time. So it's knowing that my staff have got that awareness and that they're doing that every day probably makes it feel that it's less of a challenge for me. Many staff today will be taking on extra event duties to cope with the influx of fans. During rush hour, thousands of people pass through the station. Add a further 3,000 football fans and crowd management is crucial. I'll put it in the bin. Mount Florida is a main one for Hampden, so everyone goes there, so we all get told which platform it's going to be, and it's always mayhem. It was organised mayhem because we have a queuing system and stuff, but you still get people just running about the last minute. So it's trying to keep people from getting through the gates when the train's leaving. And because there's such an influx of people, we try and do counting to get them in, and the managers will do that for us. 
and they'll count it so that we know and we'll shut off the gates for health and safety reasons because people will run even if the train's moving and it's dangerous. Folks, have you just got to the front carriages, thanks? Platform capacity is 500 people for a six-carriage train. It's all hands to the pump on match day. I'm clicking. Counting the, the numbers going on. Yeah, this train's not too bad just now, but just as we get near departure time, we might get more commuters, which is normal, but football fans can see some coming through now. Right up the front, folks, there's plenty of space up the front. Walk through walk Six up. years ago, Kat was a ticket gate attendant at nearby Queen Street. Now she's a ScotRail general manager and still not afraid to get stuck in. Guys, we go on now, train's about to go. It's a bus of this station, you know, you're right in the heart of Glasgow. I think with the busyness of this station, you can be down there, you know, in the, the concourse and, and listening to people and talking to them. So I, I thrive on that. I don't like disruption, but I do like a challenge. There's four extra trains on tonight to help shift the football fans. We call them specials and it's extra trains put on for Mount Florida because we know the, how many are going, so it's to help, um, help get as many people there as we can. Each train can carry up to 600 people, which is just as well because now rush hour has hit Central Station. We are the tots and the army. We're men and we're army. Football fans and regular commuters are building up at the gates. Where are they coming? Where are they coming? Where are they coming down the road? When you hear the noise of the tots and army bus, where are they coming? To help the flow of passengers through the station, football fans are held in a separate queue. The concourse is packed with excited fans. So we came here from Ireland to support the Russian team, of the Russians. And tired commuters trying to get home. Kat and the team are working hard to get everyone where they need to be. I could get you just to move right along, thank you. But with kickoff just over an hour away, there's still a lot of fans to shift. Any disruption now would be a major headache. Central Station shares a connection with the birth of Scottish football. Back in 1872, Scotland had to play their first ever football match against England on a cricket pitch. But as football grew in popularity, it needed a home to match its ambitions. Station tour guide Paul has been unlocking the hidden history of how Central helped shape the mighty Hamden Roar. The spiritual home of Scottish football is forever interlinked with this place, Glasgow Central. Now, two miles in that direction is the present Hampden Park, the home of Scottish football. I don't think many supporters realise that's the third incarnation of Scottish football's home ground. The first ever Hampden was built directly on the proposed path of a huge railway expansion. The growing sprawl of Glasgow City's south side was about to be linked together. So the stadium had to be moved, lock, stock and barrel, 150 yards away, so the railway could then install the Cathcart Circle, which we have to this very day. The present day Hamden Park was built in 1903, that's the stadium most of us today recognise and remember from many of the great games we've all attended, be it World Cup qualifiers, European Championships. The real halcyon days of Scottish football, I would say, is the early 1930s. Massive crowds at Hampden. 
1933, Scotland played England. That day, when McGrory scored against the old enemy, the roof nearly came off the stadium itself. I never had a roof, but it would have come off anyway, because the crowd screamed in unison for McGrory's wonderful goal against England, and that was the day the Hamden Roar was born. I can imagine hearing that roar from Hamden Park that day, and it would have washed right across the Clyde, right into the station itself. Getting those huge numbers of fans out to Hamden from Central required some careful planning and crowd control. Where we are right now is the Hope Street entrance to the station. Originally, the supporters would queue from the very top of the street there, down and through these gates. If you can imagine, the supporters would come up these stairs here, in a queue, orderly queue, no doubt, uh, come round this corner here, and then we come to these steps that will take us up straight onto the platform. The Tartan Army are very colourful and they, they bring a, a great sense of joy to any games at uh, Hampden Park. The Tartan Army has got behind the Scotland team and galvanised them. And the gates are shut in Central Station and the fans are off to Hampden Park for another great victory for Scotland. When football fans are piling through the gates, footfall here at Central Station can multiply quickly. Making sure those packed trains get away safely and on time is train dispatcher Jane, known to her colleagues as Baby Jane. Although today, she's going by a different name. Sorry, it says Nathan. I put on the wrong name badge today. <laughs> and I just realised when one of my colleagues called me Nathan instead of Baby Jane. <laughs> Baby Jane became a train dispatcher over 20 years ago, the first female dispatcher in the station at that time. My nickname is called Baby Jane. Uh, I started in February 1991 as a carriage cleaner in Queen Street. That was my first station that I worked in. And there was another Jane in the squad. She was much older than me, so they called me the baby. So it's following me through, I'm always called Baby Jane. Baby Jane, don't leave me hanging on the line. <laughs> so there you go, so that's that. So basically, I'm the train dispatcher. I'm here for safety. Because anything can happen, you know, the train could come to a halt at any time. So I'm basically here to keep an eye on things. It looks as though that train is going away smoothly. One down, the rest to go. It keeps you fit. I've started to wear a Fitbit, right? Usually, per shift, I walk about 15,000 steps per shift. Exercise is a good thing. It, it uh, releases your endorphins, as you do. So, there you go. So, by the end of my shift, I'm on a kind of high. I used to be a tomboy up to when I was 15, and then my mother gave me this box, and I thought it was a box of darts. It wasn't. It was a box of Mary Quant makeup and I did not have a clue. So I uh, went out with my friends and they showed me how to apply the makeup. Then I get a bit wild with the glitter, but I like to be visible. Now, a lot of people uh, quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy it as well, but I'm mostly in uniform. And sometimes I like to jazz up a wee bit, you know, the wild hair and the makeup and all that. But as long as that driver and the crews can see me on the platform, and that's, I'm doing something right. It helps to be seen when the platforms are packed. And right now, crowds are building on the station concourse ahead of the Scotland-Russia match. Why have you been here so long? I'm trying to find out for you. ScotRail general manager Kat and her team are keeping the football fans in a queue. But around an hour from kick-off, everything has suddenly ground to a halt. Just to check are those sets away, is that 18.30 special left yet? That's the negative, we're still waiting for the road. There's a line blockage out on the bridge, but nothing in, nothing out at the moment. The 
trains have come to a complete standstill. Roger. Scott Ralph, three to JJ. It's down to duty manager Richard to work out the problem and try to solve it. Right, the situation we've got at the moment is we've got the 1806 Nielsen that's gone out. Somebody's actually pulled the passenger communications cord. So the trains come to a stop, but we can't reset it. So to get that sorted, the driver's now going to have to go on the track, which is taking a line blockage. So the line blockage is effectively close to station. Basically, this is probably about the worst case you can actually get. It's the worst thing that could actually happen. People are going to miss the game. The emergency brake has been pulled on a train just as it was leaving the platform. That train is now stuck on the bridge, going nowhere, along with every other train in the station. Just keep an eye on the board. We're we'll at the next service, and we'll get you on the move as soon as we can. <laughs> There's a fitter out there now to try and get that train moving. What we're doing is we're trying to work the best we can around it. Do you want to let uh, passengers up to platform number eight for the 52? Platform eight? Yeah, platform number eight. Hopefully, we can get that one out. The station is a finely tuned machine. It's got its pathways in, its pathways out. Everything's all timed. And if that gets disrupted, then everything goes to pot. So it was a challenge. Um, sorry about this, guys. We had a pass come on a, on a train, blocked the whole station. Almost like the perfect storm. Everything all happened all at the once. Can I get you to move right down the aisles, please? Guys, run off. Shut them off. Shut the gates. Yeah, shut all the gates. When you actually look at the night and you see, it just looks like complete and utter shambles. But there is structure behind it. There is communication. Scott Rail 14 to all staff. Please don't let any more people through onto platform number six. This train's uh, full and standing. Normally, we have a, an event manager. Um, but just the way it happened, I was doing the event and the station. So I was trying to do both. So I was actually making sure the full service in the station is, is running, plus make sure that the football fans got through onto their trains. We're from Ru Moscow, Russia. Are you excited to be here? Of course. <laughs> We're excited to stay in this queue, yeah. <laughs> For one hour, yeah, really. <laughs> how, how long have you been in the queue? Uh, I, I don't know. I have no watch. <laughs> but for a long time, really, for a long time. The train has been stuck on the bridge for half an hour. Cat receives a radio update. Uh, last message was that it was boarding on three. This is Scott Rail 7, TGS speaking. Just to let you know, I don't know if you're aware, that's uh, the line now reopened and uh, sets on its way to Mount Florida. Finally, the delayed train is on the move and the station is open and running once more. But Cat must now face the queues of fans and break the bad news that they could still miss the kickoff. Can you come out with me? I'm just going to see, is there any BTP out there? Uh, I have no idea. I have one. Walking down your situation and, um, but you know that you're going to be going down there to people that have possibly had a couple of drinks that, that might be aggressive um, and going to be unhappy if we can't get them away in time but giving them options as well. So as you're, as you're walking to it, you know, you're, you're thinking in your head, how you're going to communicate that and communicate it to a large number as well. Just to give you a bit of information, we've had severe disruption due to a PASCOM getting pulled on a, a train going to Hamden. We're trying to get services moving and there is some, but I'm concerned that you'll not get to the game in time if you wait in this queue. There was some disruption earlier that had blocked the line. It can be intense. Um, and you feel like your, your throat's going dry at times talking to people uh, because you're, you're communicating that same information. Um, and I think that's a big challenge. If you wait in this queue, you might not get to the game in time. If you want to take a bus instead, no the local service. The yep. You need to say everybody who's in charge has got Right, unfortunately, it was one of the football space. fans that pulled a pass for me, and that's what blocked the line. So I can only apologise, guys. So no bother, sir. Line. Everybody okay. has I do apologise, sir. It was a it was a passenger that pulled a pass comp which stopped the train. Yeah, okay, no bother. Scott Rail Three, Richard, we'll get this boarded now. Platform Three. What's platform number three? Skies, platform number three. I just keep coming through. Just through there. Guys, right up to the front, if you can, please. Okay, it's a, a six car. 
Open a couple of the gates. Open a couple of the gates. That's a queue cleared, so that's good. Everybody should get there in time. How long did it go to get there? 15 minutes. How long did it take to get there? Um, 10, 20 minutes. We've got the 35 to go. We've got that special to go. <laughs> Survived that part. So we are 19.37, queue's cleared. A bit later than we would have hoped, probably. The queue can look big, that's the thing. When it's in the station, when it starts to snake out, it can look a couple of chains and the, the queue is cleared. So hopefully the, the fans will get in there uh, not too late and maybe miss the start of the game, but know the, know the important bits of it. All the fans might be on the trains, but over at Platform 8, there's a problem. Shambles! One train is still stuck in the station. On board, some very unhappy fans and no driver. He's been held up by the delays caused by the earlier line blockage. We're going to get rid of it as soon as we can. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. As soon as we can get the driver around here, we, it's going. Have you heard from the SFA? Did the delay kick off at all? Or? I honestly don't know, mate. I, I've had my head full with this. You're a train man, you're a train man. Yeah. Kick-off at Hamden is just minutes away. Duty manager Richard and train dispatcher baby Jane are doing their best to calm the situation. The train's just about to go. I'm just waiting for the driver to come round and we're going to get rid of you. With tempers frayed, support arrives from the British Transport Police. All I'm trying to do is get the driver around here. As soon as I get the driver on, I'm going to get you out. Well, we haven't got a driver to make the announcement. They don't tell us anything, no announcement, no nothing. And the guy is, you know, it's not his fault, but all you can say is I'm sorry. The driver trapped in the earlier delays has now made it through to the train. Just coming through now. I think he might, he might need an escort up. We tried to get to the game on time. Scottish Rail have... They're the last of it. And... I'm giving you the option to go on the train, to go and see a football game. Now, How can I see that, or you disappear. How can I see the game now? It's up to yourself. Because the kick-off is now. Only in Scotland, because that's happened. You're there to help folk. If you fall for the bait, you're, you're, fuel, you're fueling that argument. So what I do is I stand and I let them offload. The football fan was just dying to see the kick-off. You don't want to miss the start of a film, a start of a show or anything. So I told him, calm down. Calm down. The driver's on his way, and then eventually we've got the train moving. Because of the disruption, drivers get put out of place. They had to wait for his train to come in, which was late because of the earlier delay. And it all, all came from someone pulling an emergency brake when they didn't need to. And it's caused so much havoc and people missing the game because one person decided to use a emergency break for no reason. With the last of the fans finally away, Kat and her team have a debrief. Four, four, five, seven Kevin. passengers, yeah, uh, obviously the peak the commuters. Um, how was it for your end tonight? Just a disruption, just put a span on the work, so... It was a challenging night, that one, um, because we were... The people that were on shift were wearing probably both hats that night. There was myself and the duty managers were doing their own role and, and the events role. Considering actually what happened, we actually got the majority of the passengers out there in time to actually catch the game, where at one point it was actually looking like we wouldn't do it. In all those situations, when you're in that kind of duty manager or station manager role, it's, it's like not to 90. You know, you've got to think in your feet, and then there's a big bit of reflection after it. You know, what went well, what could have went better, and what we're going to do the next time for, for that type of thing. It's been a difficult night for the team. And there's another big international match heading their way in just three days' time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do it all again on Monday? Another day in Central. <laughs>
For many fans, Central Station is a place to pass through as they head on to venues across the city. But sometimes the station itself can become a venue. Soprano Monica McGee has performed around the world. She's sung at the Royal Opera House and the Royal Albert Hall. She's sung for the Queen twice. Today, her audience include passengers for the 12.05 to Neilston and the 12.12 to Paisley. I was born in Glasgow, I was raised in Motherwell, and I've spent my life coming to this station because I studied at the Scottish Academy. So for me to walk through somewhere that I have gone through commuting my whole life and to get to sing on home ground is so lovely. And I just hope that we gave people an unexpected joy in their day, maybe. Two years ago, I had thyroid cancer. Um, so it's sort of in the most dangerous place for my job <laughs> to have it. And so I wanted to help cancer research because I thankfully had a really good outcome to my cancer journey. And there are so many others facing much more uh, tougher battles. I'm a big believer in sort of bringing opera to people that might not know what it is. And so to bring it to an environment like here, where people are just passing by and it's just kind of gradually coming to them through the, the sounds of the, the station, I think is a fantastic opportunity for people to hear music they might not already hear and they might end up really enjoying it. Their singing is absolutely lovely. I mean, I'm not an opera fan, but I must say, you know, it touches you and there was people, customers coming up and actually asking questions and some of them were actually a little bit emotional and for me that, that says enough. People here are all touched, if you think about the 110,000 people that come through the station a day, up to, you know, 50% of those may suffer from that or be, be affected by cancer. And I think that's something that people all are aware of now. It's very special for me personally. Um, my partner's recently been diagnosed with cancer uh, himself, and I've had uh, my best friends went through cancer. Um, and I just feel that um, Monica's story is really, uh, you know, an amazing story. As a venue for arts, Central Station has become a destination in itself, drawing in its very own fans, admirers and artists who come from far and near. Graham Mitchell is a self-taught illustrator who works full-time just around the corner from Central. I use the station every day and I have done for over 20 years. I've always drawn, I've always enjoyed drawing, I've always enjoyed architecture and history, so that's, that's why I draw. It's got a sort of a, a murmur to it, that, that ebbs and flows as the, as the trains come and go. It's something quite nice about it, but it's nice to be away where people aren't watching as well. These beams here are really kind of pivotal to the picture. It brings you in, so that's probably my favourite section, and obviously the Burger King, so I like the lettering. Because the station is a big part of Glasgow and because it's something that was created over 100 years ago when there was no internet and somebody must have drawn it in the first place, I look up to the, the roof every time. And I think it's something that's really quite impressive and something that Glasgow should be proud of. The unique history and atmosphere of the station doesn't just inspire locals. Artist Peter McCaughey has been fascinated by the station ever since coming to Glasgow from Northern Ireland over 30 years ago. I think train stations in general, and this one in particular, second maybe only to Grand Central in New York, is a kind of, it's, it's us at our best. I came here myself in 1988, arrived for the first time into Scotland, into Glasgow. Uh, got off the train here from Stranraer and began my life as an art student at Glasgow School of Art. And it was just, uh, you know, it's a great space to enter into. 
I mean, I've heard this space referred to as a cathedral, a cathedral to, to the locomotives that came to it, but it's kind of like a cathedral, a secular cathedral to all of us as well. I mean, it's interesting just to wonder for a wee moment about all the people here right now. Where are they going? Where have they come from? What are they talking about? Why that long hug, you know? As a space, Central Station inspires artists, but it has also been a gallery for art for decades. One artwork that speaks to the station's place in the history and fortunes of Glasgow is this mosaic by Jude Burkhauser, made nearly 30 years ago. Many people are passing by, coming in from Hope Street, and are not really knowing anything of the history of it. The left-hand panel depicts the sunrise over the west of Britain, the return of light to the land. A British Rail intercity train beginning its journey from the south, through the Midlands, the Lake District, the borders, via the west coast of Scotland, into the heart of Glasgow. You know, we've got uh, Greek Thompson, we've got Macintosh, we've got the Mitchell Library, here, centre stage, which I love, is a reference to another artist. So uh, you'll see on the Finiston crane, or crane as it's called locally, is a locomotive on fire. Why is a locomotive on fire? Because it's George Wiley's straw locomotive, which was made in 1987. Uh, and again, was a really interesting connection to this station because his work was a lament for the loss of the locomotive manufacturing industry in Springburn. George Wiley was a local artist and self-taught sculptor. His 78-foot train, made from steel, straw and chicken wire, was transported through Glasgow and hung from the Finiston crane. That particular crane would have moved 18,000 trains all across the world that were manufactured in Springburn. Wiley's straw locomotive was then taken to Springburn Engineering Works, once the heart of the city's engine building industry, and set on fire, a poignant symbol of the loss of Glasgow's industrial and manufacturing heritage. But in everybody's mind who was there and who remembers that, they remember it burning in the crane as Jude has visualized here. Bearing witness to more recent historical events is perhaps Central's most iconic work of art, Kenny Hunter's Citizen Firefighter. Citizen Firefighter was commissioned by Strathclyde Fire and Rescue and unveiled in 2001 as a tribute to Glasgow firefighters past and present. One person stands for all of us. And I think in a very working class city, that's uh, Kenny really understands that kind of way of how you make a, how you celebrate, make a statue to somebody and everybody at the same time. And one of the things I love about this work is the way that events circle it. Three months after it opened, uh, the Twin Towers came down. And of course, the sculpture became a, a, a focal point for people grieving and reflecting and wishing to offer to the New York firefighting community their, their kind of thoughts and sorrow. So uh, lots of floral tributes and lots of kind of offerings. We've looked at a range of things, some that are kind of absolutely written into the fabric of the people's trace history of the city, and others that are hidden away and kind of almost invisible and forgotten now. Gallery, stage or venue, the concourse at Central Station is many things to many people. Yeah, that's brilliant again. It can even be a platform for protest. We've just staged a die-in uh, here in Central Station. Um, so a die-in is where we all drop dead for just around 15 minutes. And it's to symbolise saying, if you don't act against the climate crisis, you're putting our lives at risk, and this is what you're doing to us. We're all members of an organisation called the Scottish Youth Climate Strike, um, and I think there is six of us here today. Um, we had a few more at the Diana Buchanan Street earlier. 
Um, but yeah, uh, we're all uh, members of this organisation and it's, it's all part of our week of action. Uh, we got here and we saw there was two police officers and we were like, ah, what are we going to do? So we decided to just drop dead really, really quickly and within seconds the police were over saying, what's going on here? Um, but uh, they were pretty understanding actually. Central Station is obviously it's a very busy place. Um, thousands and thousands of people pass through here every single day. Um, and we think that what we need to work towards solving the climate crisis is awareness. I didn't expect this. As long as there wasn't a vast amount of them, I'm quite happy for them to maybe lie. But if there was any more of them, I'd be a bit concerned. And they've done their protests, and then I think they're away quite happy. So. It's three days since Scotland played Russia. While it was a disappointing night for the national football team, it was even more disappointing for the station team, having to deal with severe disruption. Tonight, there's another international match. Scotland are taking on Belgium, currently ranked the best football team in the world. Thousands more fans are expected and it's the job of duty manager Derek to ensure the same thing can't happen again. I'll be doing the event only. Any disruption kicks in, Richard will just deal with the, the disruption. Because 1,500 onwards, I'll actually manually board the trains after that. I don't want Scotland fans starting to wander the platforms. The regular travellers will do that. Fine, we can, we're not going to encroach on that. And whoever's on the platform will need to see what space capacity we have. But at least we can control the Scotland fans. And I know Collins are going. <laughs> Maybe they're all working at Arsenal. You can try to flow of Scotland fans. Friday we got a bit of negative, uh, obviously, feedback because we had uh, an unfortunate incident where somebody pulled their passenger communications cord on the train. And that's quite hard for any duty manager or any staff member to deal with that because they're dealing with an event and dealing with the actual station situation. It was no one's fault. It was just, it was just one of those unfortunate incidents that happened. Everything happened at the wrong time, but the right time for a failure. And it was like, so we had to kind of learn from that. Derek is a man with a plan. Tonight, he will take on the duty of managing the football fans. Score rail three to score rail 14, Kat. Go ahead, Derek. Kat, I think it's safe to say we'll just start the queuing system uh, from after this 1806 Nielsen, if you're happy with that. While fellow duty manager Richard will focus on normal station duties and deal with any possible disruptions. You're on shift again, then? Yes. Hey, Luckily, we've got some support tonight, and we've got somebody who can actually manage the event, so I can just do the station. It's got L3 base. But everything seems to be flowing the same as it did on Friday, so fingers crossed that we don't have uh, any more issues. <laughs> Fans are starting to arrive and Derek's on the case. So if we count them here, 250, bang, stop. We are the best. I'll be honest with you, when I came into the away, for the minute I stepped in the door, I knew this is for me. I like organisation. I'm pretty organised myself. Scott L3, Karina. Just to let you know, we're boarding number 10 for that stuff to as well, pal. Here's Derek, over. I'm very passionate about everything I do within the railway. If you imagine a puzzle, getting around the puzzle, and who can fix the puzzle first, that's what wins the day. Score L3, 2, head a queue, Karina. Go ahead, Derek. Karina, do you have a queuing system in place now? Is it all starting to queue up? Derek, that's the queue cleared. There were six people in it, over. <laughs> Hi, Roger, thanks for that. Kickoff is in 40 minutes. Fans are arriving, but numbers are thankfully small. I put three and a half to five, but it's hard to judge who are fans and who are. But Alan's doing a good count the other now. He's kind of gauging how many fans are on it because it's most busy. Only 27 and a half thousand tickets have been sold for Hamden Park tonight. Just over half the capacity of the stadium. So everything's going a bit so far smoother. Uh, well, I'm not going to get too carried away. 
but I've even crossed my eyes. Hopefully it goes good, you know. We'll see. Uh, but it's, it's all right. You can feel that you can sense everything's nice and ticking over nice. I've only got really an hour of this, and then after that, we should be fine. For the fans that have made the effort tonight, what they lack in numbers, they make up for in noise. <laughs> Football crowds are noisy. They're likely to be noisy. It's a good atmosphere. I must admit, I like the Scotland games and things like that because you're, you're here for your country and you're trying to represent, uh, watch the football that's representing your country. So I like that. After Friday, not sure, but after the weekend, they'll have got themselves together. We'll get a result tonight. We need a miracle. We need a miracle, but we'll win it. I don't think it's going to get too bad. We've got a wee rush now, I think, because kickoffs coming up, they'll start drinking, finishing up their drinks, and they'll start heading in. That's what you tend to see, don't you, that last uh, 45 minutes, the last hour? Golden hour. It's hard to predict. On a Friday and a Monday are totally different, where people will be planning on a Friday to go out and do, go drinking and everything else on a Monday. A lot of people are working the next day. There's no real pressure on the trains. I must, the integrity of the station has been maintained the whole night, which is, which is our main aim. The last of the trains carrying fans to Hamden's nearest station, Mount Florida, is dispatched on time. Success for the station team. Whether the Scotland team can match that success, time will tell. For now, it's a waiting game until the fans return. Just when you think things can't get any worse, you follow in Scotland, they can always get worse. The final score, it was 4 0 to Belgium, unfortunately. Uh, it wasn't the greatest result for us. So. There are losers and winners on the concourse tonight. Well, this is like my dress from Belgium. Obelgix is like uh, I'm kind of a Viking. And uh, I represent, of course, my colors of my country, black, yellow, and red, which is the best colors in the world. We had a blast because we had a great result today against Scotland, 4-0, a 0-4 for us. So I guess we did uh, a really good game. But for us, it's a real pleasure to be in Scotland, the best country in the world, where you can drink whiskey, and enjoying people because they are so great. Over at Hamden Park, ScotRail General Manager Cat is overseeing the smooth running of trains out of Mount Florida Station. Just keep coming along the platform, folks. What a, what a sad, sad faces are night. They look quite calm coming through. Good result for the for the station. Everybody's for both our stations, Central and, and Mount, the, for the, the people going out and returning. You know, everybody got away, got there on time and, and back home again without any issues. So good result. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Meanwhile, back in Central, there are some valiant efforts to put a positive spin on the match result. It was a big improvement on Friday night, yes. Big improvement. We played better. We moved it about. OK, we had to move it back all the time. But we played a lot better. While there are mixed emotions amongst the Scottish fans tonight, it's been a great night for Derek and the station team. I'm now eight years into duty manager of Glasgow Central. No plans to ever leave it. Uh, and what I do like about it, I love the staff. I love who I work with. I love the atmosphere. See a Friday, Saturday night. Love it, absolutely love it, and the lights die down, and you just see it, and it's just an atmosphere about the place. Uh, and it makes my heart grow, I'll be honest with you, I'm just proud to be part of it. Glasgow Central's concourse is a meeting place for every type of fan. Good friends, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He will be accompanying us on Hendu. <laughs> and every type of Hendu. All she knows is she'll meet us here at Central under the big clock, and the rest is a mystery. Hen parties of all types flock to Central for premarital mayhem. I just can't 
central to me because some of the girls are from Ayrshire, so I'm here for Glasgow. It's getting smashed can, with my crutches, yes. Going to get smashed in Blackpool. Going to the dungeons tomorrow and we're going to the stripper bar, are we? There she's, there's she's coming. coming. There she's coming. 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 Yeah. challenge is in my bag I've got a challenge a few things I've got to do and else I have to do a forfeit so I have to do 10 lunges this is my challenge <laughs> and I also have to recite the Lord's Prayer so I'm just going to crack on and do that now Everything she knows about the Lord's <laughs> Prayer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. While the hens take their parties elsewhere, <laughs> there's a more sedate arrival on the concourse. I see you later, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy is a 13 year old Samoyed, but she's no ordinary dog in a pram. Lucy is a bit of a celebrity. A couple of years ago, I just started putting her pictures on Instagram. And she, one day, I put a picture of her carrying crisps. And she started getting followers, lots of comments. So I started doing more pictures like that, just like a regular type of thing. And she got a lot more followers. Then I get people asking to send crisps so that I could take photos of Lucy carrying them. And we've done that. And ever since then, her followers just built up, just over 16,000. Today, Lucy's meeting some of her most loyal fans here at Central. I came here today because I'm a big fan of her, so I need to see her today. I even called my mom in Thailand. She said, go quick and meet Lucy. <laughs> Don't miss this moment. <laughs> Another fan arrives bearing gifts. What's yours, eh? Somebody got you crisps? <laughs> Do you get crisps, you lucky girl? Uh, my name is Mercy, I'm 27, I'm from Berlin and uh, we came to Glasgow because uh, I just really love the city and we wanted to meet Lucy. Um, I've been a fan for a really long time, I think for more than two years now and yeah, so we were really looking forward to that. They just look like really fluffy polar bears, so they're especially cute, but because Lucy is just um, a senior lady and senior dogs are just so adorable. Um, yeah, she kind of stood out in the crowd and um, because I really loved Glasgow, I was so happy that I could meet her and pet her and give her some crisps. <laughs> it's a big night for Scottish music fans in Glasgow. The Proclaimers are in town and the station is buzzing with faithful followers. Just to be the man who walks in the nursery tree. Over 14,000 fans are heading to the Hydro for the final gig in a sellout tour. When I wake up, Many making the journey by train from Central Station's lower level. Five million miles, I guess, I'm pretty much. Is that right? Five million. Right. You've overshot the runway on five million. <laughs> Is it uh, 5,000 miles? Come back a bit again. 500 miles? That's the one. Many fans have travelled more than 500 miles to get here. And I called her on Friday from the States. I says, what are you doing on Monday? And she says, nothing. And I'm like, I'm coming. This is Hetty. She's a canine partner. She's a bit of a legend at the Hydro. Um, <laughs> she normally goes and sleeps through every concert we go to. She slept through the Westlife concert. She slept through Pink and woke up at the last song. So we're hoping she quite enjoys the Proclaimers. We judge her on how long Hetty sleeps for. When I was younger, my mum and dad used to take me travelling in the car. I used to ask for the brothers to be put on. <laughs> I absolutely love them. I really do. And I'm making such a fool of myself. <laughs> let's get married. No. <laughs> oh, let's get married. That's your one. <laughs> Sunshine! Oh. oh, Jean. Maybe. In Scotland, in Glasgow, and we're no thinking of it in Captain Hand. Our least favourite is 500 miles.
But not everyone is heading to the gig tonight. We were traveling for 19 hours um, with Interrail. We are on our way to Milngaywi. I think it's pronounced, yeah. Milngaywi, um, um, we want to go to the West Highland Way. Yeah, and then from there to Fort William the next couple of days. And then maybe the Great Glen Way from um, Fort William to Inverness. But maybe not all the way. That's 175 miles of walking. Just 325 more, and they'll be in good company. Do you know the proclaimers? We've heard of them, mm -hmm. like a few Hardly. popular songs. <laughs> uh, 500 miles, of course. <laughs> Yeah, he's singing probably saying that. I don't mind Saturday night side, doesn't bother me. Eh? It's just it's okay, yeah. It's, uh, I get a good laugh as well. Good bit of banter with a lot of the pastors as well, so uh, it's no problem. Eh? It's pretty good. Ryan, do we ever get any hassle? We get hassle. <laughs> <laughs> It just depends, you know, but it's nothing, nothing major. Nothing we can't handle anyway. It's just the drink, probably, at all. As the wheels of Central Station grind to a halt for another day, shift station manager Drew and his team are preparing for the night shift. It's never real to stay your message. We at the Edinburgh see the buffer to the platform. Everybody over to Martha. Flash one in and I'll bid you good morning. Over. Good morning, Eddie, and thank you very much. That's the last Edinburgh arrives, so I'll put a few passengers off it once they get out of the station, we'll close up. And that'll be us. Good night. Anyway, good night. See you later. That's us. It's us, us, us. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is good night. Glasgow Central is now closed. See you all in the morning. But Central Station never sleeps. Pigeons are allowed to stay, yes. That one's up late at the night. Behind closed doors, there's work to be done. The station's lovely and peaceful, look. Empty. Myself, the cleaners. It's not often you see a like us. Right, we'll work together to get it spick and span, ready to go for the next day. I'm moving on from counting pigeons to counting bikes, would you believe? The bikes don't fly, so the bikes are easier. Pigeons are more difficult to count, obviously, for they try and hide from me. Basically what happens if there's a bikes over here for a fortnight, they get taken down to the store and they're left there for 30 days. If it's still there after 30 days, it gets moved to charity, they give them to a charity. So I'll put a warning notice on these bikes. Be warned, people, if you don't come in and get your bike, it'll be taken away. But how quiet is the station compared to when it's open during the day? One, two, three, just I think that's working, Gary. I think it's working. One of the procedures we've got is a uh, track cleaning. That's with these boys up. You see them in the distance. That's where they're doing cleaning the litter. So that was done every week. I don't fancy their job is the way they're going out there picking the litter up, but they do a good job picking it up. It makes a big difference if they come in and keep the tracks clean. There seems to be a lot of work outside the night and by the side. Looks as if they're maybe being replaced a bit of rail. 
and they've only got so many hours to do it in, so they'll be hard pushed. I find myself loyal to the station. Devotion's a bit too much, I think. But it's just working in the station, it's, you know, I'm proud of, I'm proud of the station. Just me and the station, the trains. Notice how I put the station first there. Station man. No a train man. But you know, there you see it, Glasgow Central, the concourse, empty. Not everybody gets the opportunity to see the station like this, the way it is just now. Compared to your 110,000 passengers a day coming through, there's only about a dozen people in the station as we speak. Can he beat it? A couple of years' time, I'm 40 years in the railway. I was thinking about retiring at 40 years, but I was speaking to one of my colleagues who's approaching nearly enough 50 years in the railway. So he's given a new target. Uh, so it's whether I, I can last another 12 years or no, I don't know. Uh, but if it's 12 years, and I need to be, it'll be 12 years in Glasgow Central Station, believe me, because I'm going nowhere. I would probably be lost with it at this station, to be honest with you. Yeah, the railways in Glasgow Centre has been the best part of my life, so... I'd right, be lost without the railway in Glasgow Central. It's a great place to work. <laughs>